Yes, people, Ricky here from Behind the Bars TV. Hope you're all fit and well. Um, in this episode, I'm bringing you a story from Scotland. This came to my attention only a couple of months ago when one of my Scottish subscribers I, um, mentioned it on one of my videos and asked us to look into it. And uh, I hadn't even heard of this murder up until the subscriber mentioned it to us so i've been looking into it and the murder that i'm talking about is imram shaheed baldy and his gang murdered a 15 year old chris donald up in glasgow in 2004 but what i'll do is i'll just going to read through a few things that i've jotted down um just to give you the facts before i go more into the story so, on the 15th of March, 2004, Chris Donald was abducted from Kenmuir Street by five men associated with a local British Pakistani gang led by Imram Shahid, also known as Baldy. The kidnapping was for a revenge attack on Shahid, which happened in a nightclub. So, Shahid was in a nightclub in Glasgow City when he was attacked by a local white gang. So uh, Chris Donald was chosen as an example of a white boy from the Cullock Street area, despite having no involvement in the nightclub attack or any gang activity. So this 15 year old boy was targeted because Baldy was attacked in a nightclub. So the fi innocent 15 year old boy has been kidnapped off the street by Baldy and his gang. But uh, Donald was taken on a 200 mile journey to Dundee and back while his kidnappers made phone calls looking for a house to take him to. Having no success at this, they returned to Glasgow and took him to Clyde Walkway near Celtic football training ground. There they held his arms and stabbed him multiple times. They stabbed him 13 times. He sustained internal injuries to three arteries, one of his lungs, his liver and kidney, before the doused him in petrol, set him on fire and watched him as he bled to death in agony. The issue of the killing quickly became politicized because of the racial element. After the murder, there were reportedly racial tensions in the area, sufficient to lead to the police intervention. So after the murder, there was only two men initially arrested for this and the other three had fled to Pakistan. So the two men that were arrested for this crime, um, one was Dornish Zahid, was found guilty of Chris Donald's murder on the 18th of November 2004, and was the first person to be convicted of a racially motivated murder in Scotland. The other man, Zahid Mohammed, admitted involvement in the abduction of Chris and lying to police during the investigation and was imprisoned for five years. He was released after serving half his sentence and returned to court to give evidence against the other three defendants. So he only got a five year sentence because he must have done a plea bargain and he's agreed to give evidence against the other three. So the other three suspects were arrested in Pakistan in July 2005 and extradited to the UK. Following the intervention of Mohammed Sawad, the Member of Parliament for Glasgow Central, the Pakistani police had to engage in a long struggle to capture two of the escapees. There is no extradition treaty between Pakistan and Britain, but the Pakistani authorities agreed to extradite the suspects. There were numerous diplomatic complications around the case, including apparent divergences between government activities and those of ambassadors. Government figures were at times alleged to be reluctant to pursue the case for diplomatic reasons. The three extradited suspects were Imram Shahid, Zishan Shahid and Mohammed Faisal Mustak, all in their late 20s arrived in Scotland on the 5th of October 2005. They were charged with Donald's murder the following day the trial opened on the 2nd of October 2006. On the 8th of November 2006, the three men 
were found guilty of the racially motivated murder of Chris Donald. All three had denied the charge, but a jury at the High Court in Edinburgh convicted them of abduction and murder. Each of the killers received sentences of life imprisonment. Imram Shahid, Baldi, was given a minimum of 25 years. Zishan Shahid and Mustak, uh, Mohammed Mustak received a recommendation of 22 years. So obviously with Baldi being the ringleader of the gang, he was given the most, which was a 25 year minimum term. But the reason why I'm bringing this to light is because obviously there's been a few more stories in the media about what's happened with Baldi inside the prison system. But the BBC has been criticised by some viewers because the, f because the case featured on the national news only three times. But with this case being the first in Scottish history of a racially motivated murder, you would think that this was seen more in the news. But um, like I said, there's been racial tension between the Pakistanis and the white people up in Glasgow. It's been going on for years, what I've been reading up on. Um, but there's been tensions going on. Uh, the family of Baldy has been getting victimised and they have been getting a lot of hassle because of what Baldy and his brother had actually done. But in the prison system, he's hated by all the cons, he's hated by the screws, he's hated throughout the country. But I bet a lot of people, now if some of me subscribers and viewers could just say in the comments whether or not you had actually heard of this story, because like I've mentioned, I hadn't even heard of this story up until one of me subscribers told us about it. But you would have thought that because of the because of actually what happened, a 15-year-old boy kidnapped off the streets by five older men. I mean, imagine what that poor lad must have been going through when they've took him on a 200-mile journey, uh, beating him up in the process, bringing him back, then stabbing him 13 times, dousing him in petrol and setting him on fire, and watching him while he bleeds to death, all because Borley was attacked in a nightclub by a group of men. But why go and pick an innocent lad off the streets when you could have went back to the nightclub and look for the lads that attacked you instead of going for someone innocent, a 15-year-old boy? But Baldy hasn't been getting a... He hasn't had an easy time whilst in prison because this, um, this little video, what I'm going to put on top of this now, will show you when Baldy got ambushed in the gym here it is now here's the video ambushed in the gym by crawford and ian hislop who were both serving life sentences and drug dealer darren watson but as you can see crawford comes up behind him but this all happened in Kil kilmarnock prison baldy comes up behind him with a 15 kilo weight and smashes him you can see him smashing it on the back of his head whilst he's on the rowing machine and uh, he's luckily he didn't die, but the, when he went to hospital, the medical staff and the doctors said he only survived because of his size. But as you can see in the picture, I'll just put a little photo up, but you see the photo at the beginning. Baldy is a big, muscly fella. Um, obviously, he only survived because of his stature, but he suffered a fractured jaw and cheekbone, shattered teeth and cuts. But obviously that must have been off the force of the hit and when he's fell over. But Baldy's pal who was in the gym, Bissett, actually came running over and tried to help. But then the rest of the other prisoners, as you can see in the video, have ambushed him and attacked him and smashed him with metal bars and weights. But the two lads that, the two lifers that done it, which is Crawford, Two seconds, where's it at? Because I've wrote it all down. William Crawford was serving a life sentence with a minimum of 18 years for killing Scott Adams, a 20-year-old. Ian Hislop was also serving a life sentence, which he got in 2008, with a minimum term of 15 years for stabbing and killing Ian Thornton. But for the attack, when they went up in front of the court, 
He actually admitted to the attack, Crawford and Ian Hislop. Hislop got an extra three years, nine months on top of his sentence, while Crawford got an extra four years on top of his sentence. But with these two already serving life sentences and they're getting like an extra time on top, Crawford, if he's serving an 18, minimum term of 18 years, and he's had four years added on. I don't know how it works up in Scotland, but if the viewers could let us know, does that mean his 18 years has now moved up to 22 years? Or sometimes what happens down here, it doesn't really make any difference if you're serving a life sentence. That's why sometimes it's not really much of a deterrent for them, because when you get, say, an extra four years added on, you'll only it'll run concurrent with your life sentence, so you won't really serve any longer, apart from when you come up for your parole hearing you'll end up getting a knockback because you've done this whilst serving your sentence. But this happened in the gym. And I would also like to know whether these lads were actually on protection because I'd imagine Baldy was on protection because if he was down here in these prisons, he would, without a doubt, he would be on protection because he would be getting attacked all the time. But... Like I say, if you can let us know whether these were lads that were on protection on the VP wings, and this happened in the gym, he got ambushed in the gym, um, whether or not these lads were on protection for being debted up or whatever, because what happens on protection, on the which it's called, politically, it's called the, the VP wings. But normally, lads that are down there, someone's sometimes serving life sentences, have been put down there because... They've gotten into drug debts or they've gotten into trouble with the other prisoners and they've put them down there for their own safety. So this is what might have happened. Um, but also, in February of this year, Baldy actually attempted to take his own life. He slit his own throat in Grampian Prison, I believe. Yes, he slit his own throat and got took to hospital. But um, he survived... The reason why he done that is because his family's getting that much grief on the outside. Baldy said he attempted to take his own life to ease the pressure on his family. Obviously, he's got to live with what his family's having to suffer because of what he done to that young boy. But um, another attack which just recently happened over the last few weeks, a young, it was described as a young a Scottish guy, a wee guy, just a little fella, actually choked a cup of boiling water over Baldy and he's put himself behind the door and he's waiting to go on protection. So like I say previously, I, I can't understand why he's not already on protection because he'll be the most hated man in the system. But um, the little fella chucked the hot water over, him, over his face and went running off down the landing, uh, clapping his hands with joy, saying, I've just scalded Baldy. Um, yeah, so I would just like to know people's thoughts on this. And um, I think I've covered everything just about for that one. But like I say, I brought that to light because it wasn't really mentioned in the press. And uh, obviously the things of what's been happening in the gym. And I just thought I would like to share that little video with you because I bet you not a lot of people have actually seen that video of them getting attacked in the gym or much on the story. But if you do like me content, people, remember to like and subscribe. But I will be uploading more, um, more things about the Scottish prisons, the Irish prisons, and also not forgetting the Welsh. I will be uploading some Welsh videos about what's happening in the prisons down there. Um, but the, late, um, the next one I'll be doing is on a fella called Malcolm Leggett also known as Malky Leggett. The Scottish subscribers have been asking for this one as a few times his name's popped up. So I will be doing one on him. I'll also be doing one on Jimmy Holland, who's also notorious up in the Scottish prisons. I've just bought his book, so once I've read it, I'll be uploading videos on that. But I'll leave that one there for now, people. Enjoy the rest of your day. Take care.